I've had a PS5 for around three weeks now, and I'm confident enough to say that yes, the PlayStation 5 is better than the PlayStation 4. It's a bold strategy, Cotton. Let's see if it pays off for them. The design at first when I saw it, I wasn't a fan, but now having it at home, I've got used to it. The sheer size of it makes it impossible for it to fit horizontally in my entertainment unit, but that's probably for the best anyway, because it will help with the airflow in the long term. Speaking of airflow and the fans, they make a fair amount of noise when you first load up a game, but after that it tapers off, and even for the most graphically intense games, it's not that loud. That's a big plus for me, as the PlayStation 4 got ridiculously noisy with almost every game, and the PS4 Pro was even worse to the point that it put me off playing it for too long. The controller, while bigger than the PlayStation 4 pad, is also heavier, and with that, comes a sort of more premium feel to it. It feels like it'll last a lot longer too, something I can't say for the previous ones. I went through probably three or four PlayStation 4 controllers and yeah, not the best experience. As for the adaptive triggers, they have a strange feeling to them at first where they have this sort of staggered resistance push to them. You'll feel it in games like Horizon Forbidden West where Aloy's using her bow, and Astro's Playroom also demonstrates it really well. Speaking of Astro's Playroom, it's nice that they included a game that demonstrates really well all the functions of the controller. Also, it's not just a tech demo, you get a few hours of fun platforming gameplay, essentially for nothing. Highly recommended that you play it. So far the graphics do look like a step up in terms of clarity. All the games I've played so far look sharper and run smoother than anything I've experienced on the previous generation. Horizon Forbidden West is probably the best visuals I've seen so far, but as time goes on we will probably see even more impressive games. And of course I've yet to play God of War Ragnarok, so I'm expecting big things from that. As for the SSD storage, it's definitely quicker at loading games, including PS5 games. It's a shame there's no quick resume function, but I guess that's one edge that the Xbox has over PlayStation. Already after only a few games, I've used a fair bit of storage though. Horizon Forbidden West is around about 100 gigs alone, so I'll probably end up getting some extra storage at some point. Thankfully, compared to the Xbox, it's not such a huge cost as it's a readily available SSD storage. Just a quick look on Amazon and I'm seeing a 1TB SSD for around about £100 or even less if you can see some deals. Of course, over time, that price may fall even further. Also, I have the Disc Edition console which allows me to watch 4K Blu-rays which is a first for me and still buy games physically yes I'm one of those who still likes physical media it's still usually the cheaper option especially for newer titles finally we all know there is a rumored PlayStation 5 slim coming while previously wanting to wait I'm genuinely not that interested in it anymore yes it will be smaller but outside of that I don't really see any point in getting one Saying that, I may get it later down the line just for the novelty of it, but I don't think you'll be missing anything that unique if, like me, you choose to get a PS5 now.